Hey everybody, welcome back to The Health Bridge. This is Dr. Sarah Gottfried and I'm here with my co-host, Dr. Pedram Shojai. Hi Sarah, hi everybody. Hey, so I just saw this super cool flick called Origins and I wanna talk about it today because <laughs> we happen to have the producer, the director, and the star on the line with us. His name is Pedram Shojai. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I want to do, Pedram. I I have watched your film a couple of times, and I, I just think it's amazing. And I want to pull out some of those really juicy nuggets that really advance our understanding. How does that sound? Uh, love it. Love it. I am, I am eating and living and breathing origins all week, and we're in the middle of um, our or free screening and um, it's going gangbusters. Uh, it's sharing. We've had over 105,000 shares in the first four days. Um, uh, people love the movie and it's just like literally it makes me cry sometimes reading some of the comments. Mm. Well, I've seen some of those comments online and I, you know, maybe we could start first. I'm just going to assume that not all of our listeners have heard us talk about origins and why you wrote the film and why you wanted to do this. But I, I think it might be helpful just to give one or two lines about what this film means to you right now. Yeah, sure. I mean, it it is my legacy that I created for my son, right? Saying, hey, we owe it to you to preserve a planet and preserve all that is good and natural because it's on our generation to either fix this and do something about it or really hand over a world that's a toxic dump and saying, good luck, guys. Right, and, and we have it within our power with every single purchase we make right now to either vote with our dollars on the good guys that are doing the right thing and doing organic stuff, you know, anything that like is preserving the natural heritage of what we do to not destroy the earth, or we just spend our money with you know, the companies that are poisoning the planet and wondering why they can afford all these lobbyists to move our politicians to make decisions that are against our best interest, right? And so enough's enough is really where I kind of drew the line and said, this is what we're doing and this is why we're making this movie. It is about us waking up and saying, no, this is our planet and we are going to do something about this. Yeah, boom. So I want to make sure that we share with our listeners how they can listen to it. Can you talk a little bit about how they can access it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're, we've are we set up a free screening uh, for everybody, but go to uh, thehealthbridge.com slash origins and uh, you can get your free tickets there and come in and see it. We're doing a limited free screening right now. And, um, and so sometimes it'll be open, sometimes not. So depending on when you listen to this show, uh, we're, we're in the middle of this uh, just incredible, incredible uh, surge in the first few days i mean literally you know i think 200,000 people have seen the movie and shared it and it's, it's so it's as a filmmaker it's really heartwarming right it's one thing to have 10 fingers and 10 toes when the baby comes out but it's actually cute <laughs> wow yeah so okay so i want to talk about some of these memes that you have in the book and i want to emphasize the actionable possibilities because you've got a lot of them and frankly, you know, there's a lot of films out there, documentaries that don't have the actionable possibilities. You know, one with apologies to Guga, to uh, what's his name, Guggenheim and Al Gore. They did Inconvenient Truth, mm. and I felt like there wasn't enough actionable mm. steps in that film. So let's talk about some of those actionable steps. You know, one I'm thinking of in particular is uh, you have such an amazing cast of characters David Wolf, Dave Asprey. Mark Sisson, Alejandro Younger, Yum, many, many folks that I think are so important and such great spokespeople for where we are right now and what we could do better. But Johnny Bowden in particular had a line about fat and how we really, we got the wrong guy when mm. it comes to fat. It's sugar that's really the problem. And he talked in such a clear way about the kind of fats that we should be eating and how important that is for making hormones, for you know just reducing inflammation in the body. And so I wanted to emphasize that particular point. Do you recall some of his points that he made about fat? I've only seen the movie 900 times. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe this would be fresh on your mind. Uh, yeah, well, it's... 
a very funny thing that happened when there was a couple studies that came out that that sort of implicated fat and 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 i think uh alan christensen said it really well it's like you know um if you're flying over paris and uh you see a bunch of umbrellas out because it's a rainy day you deduce that you know a, you know having a lot of umbrellas on the street makes it rain right and so that that's how some of the science happens uh when we look at things and we don't quite understand them but we draw conclusions too quickly and so you know we look looked at fat, we threw it all under the bus and we said, you know, fat is bad. So let's take fat out of everything. And uh, as we went through that in this last generation, um, if that were to have been an effective policy, obesity wouldn't be on the rise as such, right? It's like everyone started demonizing fat and eating, you know, their little breakfast muffins and their pastries at Starbucks or whatever they were doing and getting these enormous sugar spikes that would convert straight to fat and get stored as energy in the form of fat. And so we really just had a very uh, incomplete understanding of the biochemistry that happened happens inside the human body and the result has been tragic. I mean, di diabetes, heart disease, obesity, all these things that we've been seeing. And so, you know, the cat's out of the bag, but most of the Western world still doesn't know this and understand this. And so this is why uh, film is such an important medium for me is, you know, I can only talk to 20 to 50 people a day in a clinic, but, you know, we've talked to a lot of people in the last few days with this movie. 200,000, I mean, that's totally amazing. Yeah, so I, I really liked how Johnny talked about you know, it's not fat that's the demon. Like this is a case of mistaken identity. It's the damaged fats. It's the trans fats. It's the industrial seed oils that are used over and over again in restaurants. The oils that you find in nature, which is I think such an important theme of your movie, you know, what you find in nature is basically what we want more of. We're talking about coconut oil and avocados and olives, you know, these flaxseed oils olive oils, these oils that are so nurturing for the body that are important. And, um, you know, I, I still find that this is almost like a, we're Dean Ornish refugees. You know, I went with Dean Ornish's work in the 80s and went low fat and I was eating those pastries, those low fat muffins you're talking about. And it still has this residual hold on us. That's mm -hmm. a problem. Yeah, it's it's burned in and to the point where people don't know what to eat for breakfast. It's like, what do I do without bread? And so things have really shifted in a way where our genetic memory of food um, is kind of taken a, a seat because our active memory of food is, you know, how we modeled, uh, you know, our childhood after our parents, after our society. And if you go back two generations and realize that we've just been doing it wrong, there's this like rude awakening where we have to re convene around what food is, what the body recognizes as food, and what our bodies thrive on versus what we're just kind of stuffing in as empty calories and suffering with um, needlessly, right? It's we have taken a departure from that, and that's where Johnny was really, <laughs> Johnny's such a strong voice too, uh, you know, just really throwing that gauntlet and saying, look, good fats, I mean, eat avocado. That's not the problem. The problem is usually the pastries. The problem is the bread, the stuff that convert the, 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 the stuff that converts to the sugars that then get stored as fat. And so we have this fat phobia, uh, and all we're doing is eating processed foods that are processing out fats, which is really uh, looking for you know the, the bad guys in the wrong neighborhood. It's just not right, and we found that. Uh, but the science is way ahead of the culture and the culture is still suffering and doing fad diets every month, trying to figure out how to lose weight while still buying into an old model. Amen, brother. You know, another meme that I love is the work of Mark Sisson. And uh, one of the images from your film is Mark Sisson walking across a, a tightrope. <laughs> yeah, slack line. Slack line, okay, I don't know the language. So, so tell us a little bit about what you learned from Mark Sisson. What were some of the actionable possibilities there? Well, for two million years, uh, we did great. We were at the top of the food chain and we were this thriving organism uh, that was genetically expressing in this really amazing way where our brains took off and we developed tools and technology and all that. And then we changed the way we ate. And as we start to change the way we ate, all of a sudden, all of these modern chronic illnesses and ailments have come on and booted up and everyone's scratching their heads wondering why things are wrong. And you know, the, the moral of the story is eat how we used to eat and you'll feel better, right? Go back to what was working 
And don't let yourself get distracted by the billions of dollars of advertising trying to tell you this is fine, eat our stuff, our manufactured plastic wrapped inside of cardboard boxes stuff, which isn't food but resembles food. Just go eat food, real food. Right on, love that. So you and I both are big fans of Tom Maltair and he is, he's kind of, maybe the geekiest guy in your film. I mean, we love Tom. He brought so much good information to your film. Can you help us with the actionable possibilities that he raised, especially around the microbiome? I feel like the microbiome is so complex. I was just reading a New York Times article about the microbiome and how it's not as simple as, you know, uh, increasing one type of bacterial species. It's, it's really you know, a very complex phenomenon that we're still wrapping our head around. And so I, I want to make sure that we've got some clear kind of simple takeaways when it comes to the microbiome. I'll give you an example that really kind of hit me because as I, we, we recorded a summit that you're in and uh, a lot of the experts are in and a lot of people who are kind of big players in, the, in our industry have been invited into, which happens after the movie screening. And I interviewed uh, this gentleman, this, uh, this, this organic farmer, not too far away from my interview with Tom. And I just walked away shaking my head saying, wow, as above, so below. And so he's got this biodynamic, beautiful farm where he's got like this earthworm thing and he like puts his compost in there and he gets the worms and he puts them and takes the good soil and he's just loving up his land and like really enriching the, the variety of bacteria and life inside his soil and you could taste it in his food. Next door on the other side of his fence is a traditional farmer right, who has this company come in and take these huge sheets of plastic to cover the earth and then pump it full of, I think it was ethyl bromide gas, so that it kills all life 18 inches down into the earth so that the guy can grow strawberries without having to put as much pesticides on the strawberries because he gets a better yield. Ugh. You want to eat those strawberries? No. Right. And so this is kind of the as above example of what we do to the microbiome. And then, you know, if you were to take the same example, then this guy's like, oh, we killed everything. Let me go get this one bacteria that I know is good and go and sprinkle it on the soil and like, okay, we're fine. And that's how primitive our understanding of the microbiome is. You can't go in there and wholesale slaughter all the life in this complicated web of interactions and then come in and say, well, acidophilus will fix that. There are so many nuances to the microbiome and the rhizosphere that Tom so beautifully talks about in the movie that, you know, the, the moral of the story is how about we don't choke out the planet and learn from her intelligence and figure out what these complex webs of life and interaction are instead of trying to have this arrogant approach of saying, well, we have a couple studies that show this, therefore we've got the answer, let's move on. And that has burned us time and again and again in medicine. I mean, we thought low fat was the answer. We thought, you know, acidophilus was the answer. And so taking the wisdom of nature and really kind of taking a step back and being like, look, it's wonderful. We're scientists, we're learning, we're understanding, we're figuring this stuff out. But let's take the hubris out of it and understand that there's this intelligence behind nature that we're still trying to wrap our minds around. And it's not about having the answer. It's about not killing the planet and being healthy. So let's stop pretending and start learning. Oh, wow. I was so excited when you said hubris that I didn't hear anything you said <laughs> afterwards, but I'm, I'm just really happy to be here with you. So I want to do this. I want to give the URL for our listeners. Is it healthbridgeshow.com forward slash origins? God, I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> we can never keep this straight because yeah. we've got facebook.com forward slash the health bridge and then healthbridgeshow.com. So we're just, How about this? You know, Why don't we send you guys to facebook.com slash the health bridge? We'll put the link there and then that's where you guys can comment and we'll start a, a conversation. Instead of Great. making it confusing. Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise so, the Lord. Yeah. Because can you tell Sarah and I don't run our websites? <laughs> <laughs> so let, I, I love how human we sound right now. So I want to, as a final question, I want to preframe. So for people who are going to Facebook and clicking on the link and, and watching your film for the first time, can you give us a setup of, 
you know, for you, you as the director, as the producer, what is it that you most want people to understand? What is it that you want to really have land with them? Awesome, great question. So just just as a, a, a props and a shout out to Mark Van Veek, who was the director. I'm the producer, and he's just an amazing filmmaker that you know I'm very thankful for. He made this movie beautiful. Um, he's amazing, super talented, and he's cute too, and he's fun to party with. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, you know, and yes, I just admitted that he's cute. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, exactly. No, he's a, he's a wonderful guy. He's based out of South Africa, and we love him. So, uh, personal health meets planetary health and the two are inextricably linked and what you can do right now to be a part of the solution and not the problem. And I think that's where people are so enthusiastic about this film because a lot of the stuff in the genre is very doom and gloom. Uh, we offer real solutions in terms of how you can step up and change the way you spend your money every single day to vote towards a planet that we'd all rather see. Right? And to use your behavior as a quote-unquote consumer to drive the companies out there to, to understand that we, A, give a damn and are going to do something about it. And B, more importantly, we're going to give our money to the people that are supporting our ethos and our causes and the, the morality of having a, a legacy that we leave. Right? It's, you can be a stakeholder in our future or you can line the pockets of the companies that... that promote the the policies that are causing all the problems. You know, you could pay for the lobbyists that will work against your best interest by not by by swiping your credit card for the wrong guys, right? And so that's the real transformation is well, let's not wait for Washington and of course we want Washington and the states and the cities and all of them to be more involved and wake up to what the enlightened citizenry wants. But you can stop and change that energy and change the flow and direction of capital every time you slide your credit or debit card, every time you purchase a product. Think about who you are supporting and support the people that are supporting your family and supporting clean air and supporting a better world. Patrick, thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I want our listeners to understand how committed you are to this cause you know, you invested more than a million dollars in this film. It just is so touching to me how much you care. I mean, if, if, if you're listening to us for the first time, you may not know Pedram as well, but he is such a good guy. And I, I just love how this film represents the complexity of your thinking and how to co-create an enlightened citizenry. I think that it's just such an important cause. And I really encourage everyone to go watch this film. So let's okay. get it right one, one last time. <laughs> you say the URL. <laughs> Facebook.com slash The Health Bridge, and we'll, we'll throw the links up there. And that way, you guys, yeah, that way you guys can join us in our conversation on Facebook. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's, it means a lot to me. And you know, my business partners and everyone uh, thought I was crazy because you spend all this time and money making a movie, and then the first thing you do is give it away for free. And my point is the message far outweighs the money. And I really just want to share this with as many people as possible. We have requests for 20 languages now for subtitles. Ooh. And we're just trying to keep up with it because it's going viral. It's going around the world. And so, you know, nothing is more important for me and the future of my son's children than this message getting around the world and helping people wake up and feel part of something versus feel like, oh, there's this big bad juggernaut behemoth of like things that they can't control that will dictate the way the world goes, whether they do anything or not. It's like, wake up, guys. No, you are the most important piece of that puzzle. Step into your shoes and help us make a future that we can be proud of. Beautiful, beautiful. And so one last request for our listeners who go and watch this film. Please share this with other people. If you care about this cause that Pedram cares about so deeply, and I care about so much, watch the film and share it with seven people that you love. I just think it's it's really important that we are part of the solution. Love you, Sarah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the support. And uh, yes, please, we're, we're making the movie available for free right now. Share it with people who need to hear it, even if you know all this stuff. Think of the 10 people or the seven people, whatever in your life that need to hear it and share it with them. Yep. Right on.
So thanks everybody for listening today. It was it was awesome to get into the details of this new film by Pedram Shojai Origins. Go to facebook.com forward slash the health bridge to watch it for free. Thank you. <laughs>